Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> very, I'm very happy today to present the speakers. Uh, uh, this is all my name, uh, but you all know me here. It's Rita Lucarelli. Uh, I'm an Egyptologist, and I have the pleasure to meet Sela Nicola um, last, uh, was last year, last, only last year. It feels longer. Thanks to Ted, who introduced us. And uh, although we work in different fields, we, we've been uh, really a lot in touch about our common work in uh, humanities to the construction supply to uh, heritage preservation. So I'm also very happy that we start the cooperation on these topics. Um, and I hope that Nicola Rossella will come to Berkeley too often. Uh, but before they start, I would like to tell you a bit about them. So Rossella Franchino is an engineer and PhD associate professor of technology of architecture at the Department of Architecture and Industrial Design of the University degli Studi della Campania Luigi Vanvitelli in Italy, Naples. Uh, she carries <coughs> out research in the areas of environmental design and construction systems for sustainable architecture. And she mainly deals with the reading and controlling of the quality and characteristics of the environment, with the verification of the degradation phenomena determined, determined by anthropic activities, along with the identification of the means and intervention strategies for environmental recovery, redevelopment, and protection. She has published books, contribu contributions, um, papers in scientific journals and proceedings of uh, uh, international conferences. And Nicola Pisacane is an architect and associate professor of drawing, survey, and digital modeling uh, at the Department of Architecture and Industrial Design, same university. Uh, his PhD in, uh, is in enviro environmental and architectural surveying and image imaging at, at the Seconda Università degli Studi di Napoli, Naples, and is a member of the scientific board of the PhD program in architecture, industrial design, and cultural uh, heritage of the Università degli Studi della Campania Luigi Vanditelli. He is also a member of national and international research teams, author of scientific essays, papers on journal and proceedings of conferences about landscape, architectural and archaeological context representation, modeling and survey and application on BII modeling and GIS. And so today uh, I look forward to hear everything about what they've been doing until now on 3D modeling and development of cultural heritage and environmental asset with examples from the south of Italy and uh, in the image we see the Royal Carolino Aqueduct in Italy yes. with the Valley Bridge uh, 3D modeling. Good evening to everyone. Uh, many thanks to Lincoln Carelli for his invitation, uh, to Nico and uh, to Ted Pena to be here and for everyone that is here in this, uh, in this evening. Um, my lecture will uh, introduce some examples that we carry out at the Department of Architectural and Industrial Design in the last 10 years. Uh, in particular, uh, the example that I will show you, uh, it will concern some cultural heritage uh, sites or, or object in, uh, in Campania region. Uh, some apply to historical building and the other one to archaeological, uh, to archaeological area. Uh, in particular, the lecture uh, <coughs> will introduce the topics of the 3D modeling and uh, which are the different possibilities to apply the 3D model. So we make this model for what? And with what will be uh, the different application of this model? Uh, the first experience that I would like to show you is uh, an homage to Rita that uh, in uh, last June came to our university and uh, take a lecture about the uh, book of Zdit uh, applied to uh, some Egyptian uh, uh, coffins. And uh, uh, the first example is an example that we uh, carry out uh, in uh, 2000 and seven, 2008, in the monumental cemetery of uh, Naples. Uh, in particular, 
particular, the municipality of Naples uh, asked to the department <coughs> to make uh, a census of uh, some one of the historical chapel inside this building, and uh, in particular in an area of the Saint Gregorare, some uh, interesting example for architecture uh, of uh, the the last part, the second part of the 19th century. And uh, we make uh, a, a census of this building and uh, a 3D laser scanner modeling uh, just to make a digital copy of this building that sometimes are very abandoned. Uh, the experience uh, uh, keep in touch uh, um, people from uh, different uh, uh, sectors uh, and in particular myself with the other colleagues uh, are interested in the 3D modeling and to the survey of this, this building. We are thinking about of an experience of about 10 years ago and so also the instruments, that, the tools that we use uh, are very different from the one that we uh, see in the last example that are of uh, uh, this day, the last, uh, the last year. In fact, uh, also the system, the last scanner, the sensor are so heavy with the uh, heavy battery, with the laptop, and without the integration of these different sensors, such as uh, camera, uh, GPS, uh, and, uh, and so on. Uh, this is the protocol that we carry out during this uh, example from uh, the GPS sensor till uh, the 3D modeling, the mesh modeling, and the uh, photographic mapping of this building. In particular, we uh, make a survey of about 30 uh, chapels in this, uh, in this geometry, and uh, I uh, chose to show two of these that remember Egyptian uh, culture and architecture, in particular the one that is the Butch di Waldo uh, shapes that remember to a pyramid and uh, <coughs> the chances that <coughs> we, uh, we make, uh, these are um, the data of this, uh, this art, this is a, a small architecture, but uh, using all technology in that time uh, required a lot of time, not only for the survey, but in particular for the post-processing in, in laboratory. So we make uh, this first exper uh, experience uh, using, for example, Triscan words, uh, acquiring about 8 million of uh, points, and uh, in particular, uh, make some uh, <coughs> for example, for uh, the relief and other, uh, and other elements. Uh, but for uh, the importance of this survey is in particular related to the uh, that are many of these buildings that are completely abandoned with the uh, necessity of a restoration. These buildings are of uh, private property, so it's important to uh, define which is uh, uh, the <coughs> state of maintenance of this building. And so the 3D modeling uh, uh, survey that we acquired with laser scanner after has been modeled and mapped with the high resolution uh, uh, for high resolution picture. Uh, as you can see in detail on the right part of the slide, uh, the definition is very, very high, so you can see the detail, for example, of the door or of all the sculpture part, or for example, all the uh, elements that uh, are on the uh, stones on the top of the door itself. And uh, the census was so. Uh, rich with the historical detail, but as for the site and the 3D modeling, as completed by the plan view, so elevation plan and so on of, of, this, uh, of this building. Uh, during the time, we also try to uh, integrate uh, not only geometrical data taken from sensors such as uh, photogrammetry, 3D, laser scan and so on, but also to integrate other different data. And in particular, I show you uh, another experience that is in the Piemonte La Misericordia Church in the historical center of uh, Naples. It's one of uh, 
the most rich Baroque uh, church in, in Naples that have a, a great problem for the, uh, for the floor. In particular because uh, uh, some, this is the uh, main, uh, this is the interior part of the facility, but uh, some historical documents, some archive documents tell us that there are a, an ancient aqueduct below the church itself. That is uh, uh, the cause of the presence and the problem of moisture inside the church itself that damaged the, uh, the floor of the church. Uh, so, the integrated survey using uh, uh, not only laser scanner but using also some uh, systems such as, uh, for example, Gerard scanning allow us to make a relationship with the uh, cavity below the church with the church itself and so to understand which is the area in particular which is the cause that determine the moisture inside the, uh, the floor the floor itself and so this is uh, after the uh, hypothesis that we make for the restoration of this apartment and the uh, determination of all the elements that uh, characterize the damage of this uh, if we move in, uh, to the archaeological area, uh, we make some experience, in particular in uh, Pompeii in the, and in uh, Herculaneum Napoleon. In particular, this one, the tower, an experience that we make uh, from 2012 till 2014, is an experience in two different buildings inside the archaeological area in Pompeii. In particular, the uh, Mercurio Tower the Villa of Mysteries and uh, the uh, Amphitheater are three buildings that are very different uh, uh, not only for the shape itself, not only for the constructive technique but also for the approach that we use uh, for the 3D modeling of this building. The first example is that we uh, will show you is uh, the uh, Mercurio Tower and after we show you uh, the Villa of Mysteries and after the Amphitheater. Also in this case we use a different kind of, uh, of a sensor so we start from uh, a GPS uh, station for the referencing of this, uh, this survey and we use a spatial, spatial station and this laser scanner after we make a photographic survey with an high resolution camera and we add this data with the drone sensor and mobile mapping sensor. So it's always an integrated activity of, uh, of the science that we make inside this, uh, this building. Uh, each uh, uh, activity is, uh, was completed by a complex um, uh, activity of the design of the survey because uh, we have to work in particular hour, we have not to interfere for example with the touristic flux of the people that come inside uh, the archaeological area, uh, we have to make a picture in particular in times of the, uh, of the days and so on. So we have to uh, design all this data and to uh, maximize the possibility to acquire this kind of, the, of information. The first one, as I tell you, is Mercurio Tower that is uh, along the boundary of the archaeological area. Uh, even if uh, uh, it seems uh, very simple in shapes because it seems uh, uh, vertical uh, wall and so on, this building was uh, made using <coughs> Opus Incertum technique. So, uh, the use of 3D laser scanner uh, uh, produce uh, a lot of uh, data, regular data, that in the phase of post-processing, in the following phase of post-processing, uh, it's uh, a very complex uh, 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 operation to make. In particular, in this case, we uh, just uh, make a 3D model and we uh, extract from uh, the 3D model the uh, elevation, the plan and the vertical section of, of this building. But uh, 
I go fast on this building. It's more interesting instead the application that we make in the Villa Wisris. Villa Wisris is a, a very huge uh, villa inside the archaeological area of Pompeii, and uh, the activities that we carry out are uh, before and after the restoration. Uh, inside the rooms of Villa Mysteries are very rich in fresco, decorative uh, work and so on. And so it's important, as the Italian Ministry asked to us, to make a comparative survey before and after the restoration value. Also uh, to determine, for example, in the case of the fresco, the different color of the, the painting and so on. Uh, this is the project, so we divided uh, in uh, five uh, macro scanning projects the area of the villa itself and we acquired during uh, 12 days on site more than 8 billion of points uh, that after we elaborate and we also make uh, 275 scans inside the villa because there are a lot of room, rooms inside the villa and also we need a very uh, and high uh, value of that. This is a some image during the uh, survey activity uh, inside and outside the villa itself. Uh, we use this particular target, we do not use the target such as the one the black and white as we you see in the, in the previous example, but we use this spherical target and I will show you and I will explain why uh, when I will show the uh, amphitheater example. Uh, this is the uh, most important rooms inside the, the villa itself. Uh, which is related to some uh, Tunisiac uh, image on the fresco of the villa itself and the Italian ministry asked us a survey to determine the different phases of the realization of this work, the different element, uh, the precise color of the fresco before and after the restoration value. So, we make a very high resolution survey inside this, uh, this room and in other room. And uh, this is uh, the close range photograph uh, photographic with the drone for the uh, roof of the villa itself. And after this, is the uh, uh, point cloud model of the villa itself. And all the images that we produce are the comparison between. Pre, uh, before and after the restoration value. This is the model itself. As you can see, uh, this is the uh, room that I show you uh, before, and this is before and after the restoration because the Italian ministry asked us to determine the right uh, color of this field, and in particular, we make also a work for the uh, roof itself. The third, is, uh, the third example inside the archaeological area is the amphitheater. The amphitheater is uh, a very huge and complex building. Uh, the activity is possible only in the first hour of the morning because after there are uh, tourists uh, uh, inside the building. So we have to work only a few hours each, uh, uh, each day. As you can see in uh, uh, this image, we do not use uh, uh, planar target uh, such as the one we use just someone in the hippogeum of, uh, of the villa, but we use this, this kind of spherical, of spherical uh, target. The target that uh, are used for the alignment of different uh, point clouds uh, are uh, realized in uh, plastic <coughs> and the Italian ministry avoid to us to use something, some things to fix on the wall or on the floor of the, of the amphitheater itself. So we use just this kind of target that we move each, uh, uh, each day after the survey activities. Uh, 
these are some images in the uh, drone survey inside the building. The, uh, the survey was also um, integrated with the LIDAR from airborne survey, so from uh, a laser scanner applied to an airborne. This is the DEM digital elevation model of the archaeological area of the Pompeii, and after we start the uh, processing activity of the amphitheater. In particular, the, uh, the shape of the amphitheater that is without the planar wall, that is without the elements that you can easily recognize in architecture, uh, Asked to us to uh, make some uh, geometrical consideration of building because the activity that are that we are uh, uh, carried out uh, during this period is the realization of uh, a building information modeling of this element, and uh, we do not recognize inside this building elements that are uh, repetitive and so on. So we make some uh, operation to determine the exactly shape of this element to determine which is the, the real uh, slope, for example, of, of the sphere and so on. So we make uh, a lot of operation on the uh, three-dimensional model. I go, I go fast. We make uh, some historical comparison be between the different amphitheaters uh, of uh, Campania region and also we take data from uh, different kinds of sources that are historical picture, uh, postcards or uh, gouache and so on. So different historical image of the amphitheater itself to compare which are uh, <coughs> some parts that have been reconstructed and the original, the original one. These are some geometrical operations that we need to determine if the shape of the amphitheater is an ellipse or an oval, and so which could be the different uh, construction uh, phase of, um, of the element, how it's possible to trace, for example, this ellipse inside uh, during the construction, uh, during the construction activities. And uh, at the end, we are uh, now uh, developing the building information modeling, and so in particular starting from which is the real shape of the cavity itself and of the, the other elements. Uh, <clears throat> within the activity that uh, we uh, carry out uh, in the archaeological area in uh, in Pompeii, but also in Arcolanium, we make a three-dimensional model and a survey of the sculptural group of uh, Pan e la Capra, Pan, uh, Pan is the god and the god. Um, this is uh, uh, the sculpture that is uh, in the sacred cabinets uh, in the Archaeological Museum of, uh, of Naples. Uh, it has been uh, found in uh, Ercolanium at the end, <coughs> in the middle, sorry, of the 18th uh, uh, century. And the uh, Archaeological Museum of Naples has to us um, to make uh, a digital uh, uh, copy of this uh, uh, sculptural group because uh, they need to uh, transfer this, uh, uh, this culture for a period to the, to, to the land museum in uh, Bonn in, uh, in Germany. Uh, so we carried out a high resolution uh, three dimensional model using a particular scanner laser and after we prototype this uh, these are the uh, three different phases that we carry out. So we start uh, with uh, a three-dimensional survey using a particular laser scanner that is not the scanner that we use, for example, in architecture, the one uh, placed on a tripod. But this is an arm scanner, so it's like uh, a gun. So it's not the scanner that is fixed and move inside an architecture, but uh, this scanner move around the object, the sculpture, and so on. In particular, uh, because we need a high resolution uh, uh, model, we make a model that have an error of uh, uh, less of 0 to 1 uh, uh, millimeters. After we transform uh, this model into 
a uh, mesh model and we start the prototyping with a prototyping machine. This is the, uh, the, mesh, the point cloud and the mesh model of the sculpture. After, uh, when we make the mesh model, we uh, plan how it's possible to make the prototyping of this element because it's impossible to make uh, uh, also for the invention of the sculpture itself uh, to make a prototype, a digital prototype with only one piece, only one element so we divided the element into eight parts and after we start the prototyping of this element we study where it's better to cut the prototype uh, element also to fix the different element itself these uh, are the uh, some parts of the prototypes uh, we use, uh, so we uh, transform the mesh model in an STL, an STL model, that is the one that uh, I show you uh, before, and we make a prototype in four layers. As you know, there are different kinds of prototyping with the uh, addiction, with the subtraction of elements. This is for addiction. In particular, this kind of prototype uh, make some horizontal uh, layer very very uh, close one with the other one uh, we study also how it's possible to fix different elements different elements uh, each other and uh, we use uh, uh, for material for the prototype a uh, synthetic gypsum so it's possible to have a uniform color the same color for all the all the elements because in the third phase, as I showed you before, the digital copy, that is the one that you see uh, in the nearest in the, in the picture, has been, uh, has been colored with, uh, by an expert into restoration to make this copy similar to the digital, to the digital one. And so, <coughs> to the original one, sorry and so also to uh, simulate the uh, calcium oxalate that uh, characterize this building cell. At the end, the, this is the uh, digital prototype has been transformed, transferred into the original position into the second cabinet uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Naples just for, for a few months. Next example is an example that we carry out uh, in the uh, last years. This is the uh, San Lorenzo Monastery, that is the location of uh, our department in uh, Naversa. It is uh, a Benedictine uh, monastery uh, with uh, origin in the 12th century, but after with many addiction, transformation, and so on. And, uh, the work, the research that we carried out is to uh, develop uh, a digital elevation model, uh, sorry, a building information modeling of uh, building itself, uh, and also to study how it's possible to integrate building information model with virtual and augmented reality. So, how it's possible to, uh, in particular, uh, using virtual reality for uh, simulate restoration. Uh, work. As you can see, uh, this is an ancient building, so we make a lot of restoration work of the different parts, and it's possible to use digital elements, to, uh, digital tools to uh, simulate the transformation of the building itself. So, this is the uh, different steps that we uh, carry out during this uh, research. So, we start from data collection that are not only the uh, metric and geometrical survey of the building itself, but also to collect data such as the historical information from uh, the archive. After we make the data processing, so the development of uh, the model itself of the building, the semantic level that uh, I will show you uh, later, and uh, the building information modeling. In particular, we realize a building information model with uh, an eye detail, and so we realize an as built model. So we simulate the uh, building itself as it, will, as it was. 
this is the uh, project of uh, uh, the scan world map, so the position of the scanner laser during the survey activity. This is uh, the, uh, the point cloud model. As you can see, there is a high resolution model that we carry out. There are some uh, data in the top part of this building. Uh, and uh, we start the model using uh, this software we use for this, close, this, process, this project, the JR reconstruction software. That is a software developed by an Italian university, in particular applied for architecture, because automatically recognized the architectural element inside a, a building. This is a, just an example of the uh, watch that is uh, uh, inside the main cloister of the, the cloister. And uh, after we start with the building information modeling, as you know, uh, building information modeling try to uh, use and to transform each element that characterizes architecture in particular into a parametric model. So to determine the parameters that characterize each element, a column, a bolt, a windows, uh, a floor, ceiling, and so on, into the characteristic but uh, if it's uh, very easy for the elements such as the wall, ceiling, vault and so on, for other elements it could be very, very different. So we start the semantic labeling, so the parametric uh, modeling, for example, of uh, the column of the main cluster. In particular, uh, dividing it, uh, each element into the, uh, the different part of uh, its and this is the semantic labeling, so to classify each element, the ceiling, uh, the vault, uh, the wall, uh, the stairs, uh, the different kind of window itself, uh, and for each we uh, realize a beam family, so we determine the parametric modeling of, of, each, uh, of each element. This is the uh, complete uh, building modeling with different colors for the different uh, phases of construction, 16th century, uh, 19th century, and uh, 18th, uh, 18th century. But uh, uh, the interest for us is to uh, try to apply a virtual reality model, an augmented reality model, to this uh, building information model that we are uh, realizing. In particular, we uh, try to use uh, uh, three different kinds of uh, uh, augmented reality. The first one that is a, a simple visualization of the 3D model inside uh, a, uh, a mobile, a mobile uh, device, such as a tablet, a mobile phone, and so on. The second one that is, uh, and we use uh, the augment uh, uh, software. So you visualize the 3D model outside the building itself. Instead, it's, this is a very uh, interesting application that we make using HoloLens emulators that allow us to superimpose the reality of the model itself with some hypothesis of restoration. So it's possible through this, uh, this element to see, for example, some kinds of, uh, uh, of different restoration phases of the restoration to use this kind of, uh, of system. And so we make, for example, for the different element itself, this, uh, uh, this research, this uh, explanation. Uh, last two case uh, study, this one uh, that are uh, applied both to uh, environmental scale and to uh, architectural scale. This one is uh, the Carolino Aqueduct that is in the image of the uh, flyer of this uh, lecture. Uh, the aqueduct uh, is the aqueduct that the takes the water to the Royal Palace in Caserta. The Royal Palace is characterized by this garden with uh, many fountains and uh, water uh, layers. And uh, there is a 
cycles long, uh, about uh, 14 kilometers, that take uh, between mountains and hills and so on, uh, the water to the uh, Royal Palace of Caserta and to the garden itself. Uh, in particular, this aqueduct is uh, underneath, so you cannot uh, explore this element, uh, even if, uh, in particular, um, infrastructure. This is the uh, valley bridge that is one of the most uh, interesting part of the aqueduct itself. This is uh, a bridge uh, designed by the architect and engineer Luigi Mauritelli that cross this, uh, this valley, this valley itself. Uh, because, uh, as you know, uh, Caserta and the Royal Palace is inside the uh, UNESCO World Heritage List, it's important to uh, try to realize a system that uh, allows also to, for tourist uh, use uh, to know which is the path of uh, the aqueduct, the aqueduct itself. So we start with the survey of the few elements that you can see of this element, so some bridges, some uh, mills that are along the path, the path itself, and after we uh, collect all this data into the Google Earth platform. So this is uh, information that has been shared by the Caserta uh, Superintendenza, and so it's possible for tourists to see the Royal Aqueduct path, and so to visit to, uh, for a virtual visit of this uh, uh, this system itself. And so there are the model of, for example, the some mills along the, uh, the path itself and the valley bridge that I show you in the, in the picture. Uh, the last uh, uh, case study that is also connected to some experience of uh, uh, environmental restoration of this area is uh, in uh, Chile and Valencia National Park in South part of uh, Campania region, uh, we carried out an integrated uh, survey from airport, from uh, UAB system, from float, uh, but also from the land, the land itself. In particular, the National Park is characterized by uh, a very complex orography. This is a digital elevation model that we carry out from the survey from the airborne and is uh, characterized by a great presence of water through river canal uh, and other kind of, uh, of system. And uh, in the past, uh, the, this presence of, uh, of water is characterized by the presence of many, many water mills. There are more than uh, uh, 1,050 water mills in all the in all the area, and we start from a census and uh, a uh, digital survey of this building. This uh, data has been collected inside a geographical information system, and are the opportunity for the uh, restoration, the environmental restoration of this area that will be presented by Rossella Franchino. Thank you.
there are three water mills on the horizontal wheel, which have in the past been of considerable economic and social importance. The mills were used for the transformation of agricultural products and at the same time constituted a meeting place between the local population and the foreigners who were going to green. Some, uh, now some images of these historical water mills. Uh, also considered the relationship that the Lauso River ecosystem established with the cross the territory and with the activities that, play, that uh, take place in it. The Lauso River context, in fact, as you can see, represents an area of a particular naturalistic value. The nice uh, objectives of this study are to safeguard the historical roots of the place and to identify uh, uh, environmental technology for the control of the relationship between the system of water, quality of soil, and its use in order to define the reference framework for the use of an appropriate technology system to optimize the cycle, the cycle of water. included three phases. Uh, the first analysis of the hydraulic aspects. Uh, the second study uh, for the reactivation of all of the historical water mills and the intervention of uh, river banks for the renaturation of the river. In this period, are represented the three areas in which the territory of the present study has been survived and where the remains of the old waterways are located. Uh, in the area one is located a pre uh, existing and related power uh, station. Because it absorbs 
ma of the flow of the river. In order to react, uh, reactivate the historical water mass, two solutions, solutions have been identified to restore the operation. In particular, the first uh, hypothesis, moving the central, the central hydroelectric in its original position. Uh, and the intervention rest, uh, regards restoring of the old uh, power station with more from point A uh, downstream to B upstream, where the old hydroelectric plant was original. Elimination of, uh, of, uh, in the, uh, with the elimination of canalization for adoption to the new hydroelectric plant. The effects. Uh, the river stage that goes from the section one to the second is enriched for the flow rate currently channeled necessary for the operation of the hydroelectric plant after the use of the hydroelectric plant returns of the river and the flow rate used. Uh, this flow rate can be used for the reactivation of the historical mills system, water mills system. Uh, the free water mill system because uh, the second <coughs> hypothesis of the activation of historical mill uh, regards the canalization of the flow rate necessary to the activation of a mill upstream with only one uh, water uh, mill. The intervention extraction from the river from the river of the flow rate necessary to uh, restore the mill at the starting quota of the hydroelectric plant formula. This flow then flow into the river and downstream of the uh, mill uh, after the use of the water is again returned to the river. Effects small reduction of the production capacity of the hydropower plant uh, without its uh, disappearance. A creation of natural flow rate expect, uh, expect in a short section of the relation of to the uh, mill. The activation of the mill is a representative example of the mechanical technology used in the past and more environmental friendly than uh, the current one. In this case, only uh, one water mill was reactivated. We complete the presentation uh, because uh, uh, in order to uh, suffer the quality of the water of the, uh, of the river, it has been inserted also a filter system at the point where um, uh, with the, uh, the point where a uh, uh, purification plant of Sant'Andro municipalities of Sant'Andro and Fasanella enter in the house of the utilized technology is a natural purification plant made with uh, plants called lemna type. To support in addition the quality of the water so of the river that belong to an environmental or great value system is assumed the realization of a filter system with the river fit of remediation
of different steps. And was the villa open to tourists during these 12 days, or do you have to? Do, could you do it just? No, no, it's closed. It's so closed. Closed. Yeah, closed. closed. During, during the restoration. Yeah. Work, okay. So, so you had the liberty yes. to it's sort of expand as long yes, as you exactly. it. Instead, uh, in the amphitheater that is open to tourists, we have to work uh, uh, just from the six in the morning till mm -hmm. the uh, eight fifty. Right. It, it, I was laughing because, of course, that was 2012 to 2014. Right? Yes. And afterwards, they put the big pyramid in the amphitheater. Yes, yes, yes. About, from, uh, about the original from, Egyptianizing yeah. thing. Yes, it's, it's just uh, before it's just before the war to the pyramid yeah. by Francesco Venezia. Yes, yeah, yeah. uh, just before. And everybody really knows that, but they built this gigantic wooden yeah. pyramid inside. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. It's just the period before. Uh, uh, and before the Pink Floyd concert again. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> okay. I wanted to ask about the, so you're producing a lot of data. Is it being archived by the Italian government and available online, or is it sort of stored in? Uh, no, uh, some uh, data has been uh, uh, made by, uh, it's made for Italian government, so we give all the information to Someone is instead, such as the uh, case study in San Lorenzo, just uh, a research for the US. But we make some data or some research on this for the Italian government or for the Italian superintendents, so that is uh, the local uh, office of the uh, cultural heritage industry. So if somebody was interested in using this, your models in the 3D software, could they download it somewhere? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. What formats are you archiving? Sorry? Are you fo what format? What files? What kind of files do you archive? For In which kind of example? Because well, um, for example, the, the because in the example of uh, uh, of uh, Panna and the Goat, uh, <coughs> the format has been uh, the one that is used for the prototyping uh, machine, mm -hmm. and so we transform. Uh, we see it in STL model. Mm -hmm. STL model is the format to share this data. Mm -hmm. Instead, for example, when we realize a virtual model for, for example, virtual reality and so on, we need to have a low file, and for example, we save data in KMZ format. Mm -hmm. But those big models you were making of the amphitheater. Yes, 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 because they are a very big model, uh, so we need to, to, to simplify uh, the geometry of the, this model, and uh, uh, we have to save in a different form. If I can make a question about Panna and the Goat, okay. it's a working right now on replicas, and uh, what's their function? in relation to regionals uh, and that's what in that picture there was the tourist taking a picture yes, of yes, the replica. Yes, yes. Uh, did they know that they yes, were yes, the replica? Yes, yes, they know. And they were <laughs> still, how they were reacting, they were yes. still... Uh, kind of they know that it's, uh, it's, it's a replica regional. because uh, uh, there is right that the original has been moved to the museum in, uh, in Bonn, uh, but uh, it's important, for example, in some works that are in the sacred cabinet of uh, uh, the archaeological museum in Naples that uh, all the collection has been uh, there. And so. So they were still treating it as. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> it's not a post, but we have to the, the <laughs> to no, tell to tourists that is. Great uh, replica, so difficult to realize. But it's made of an artificial gypsum, you said, then? In, in uh, synthetic gypsum. And that's the original. The, the, it's not laser printed, though. It's 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 cast in some way, right? Or how would you on the on your how, how do you create the, the, the model and the and the artificial gypsum? Is it is it yes? We create the model in eight part in the synthetic gypsum. We uh, mesh together. We join together. And after with uh, one of the employee of uh, Italian superintendents, uh, they uh, recreate uh, also the condition, the color mm -hmm. of the original. So it's 3D printed. It's 3D printed? 3D yes, 3D printed. 3D printed yes, yes, yes. It's yes, 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 yes. different pieces. Yeah. Eight, eight pieces. Uh -huh. Eight pieces. And and the weight would be roughly then yes. similar to the original weight. Yes, 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 yes. 
Right, so it's a good idea for big objects like to 3D, 3D prints of coffins, for instance, can you take pieces? Yeah. And then you yes, yes. Right. Because you cannot find a 3D printer that is, uh, this one is not uh, a big sculpture, mm -hmm. but uh, you don't find uh, a 3D printer that is larger than uh, mm -hmm. like that. And also, in particular, some element uh, you need to uh, divide into pieces. And the particular when the the there are, come yes, yes. Particular when we have particular decoration, we need to divide it into parts. For example, when you have some hole, when you have some particular geometry, you need to divide it into different parts. So, in your department, do you have maybe it's all you that uh, someone specialized in? small portable objects as opposed to buildings? Are there different areas of specialization then where one person is an expert in buildings and another in small objects that aren't buildings? Uh, or is it all? So we are architects, so we are not specialized into small uh -huh. objects. Okay, yeah. So we can work from the architectural to the territorial uh, mm -hmm. scale. But uh, sometimes we work also uh, for objects, we make, for example, also uh, the 3D uh, model of uh, the Ecole uh, mm -hmm. uh, phase uh, itself. So we work, but we are not archaeologists, we are not, we are architects, but uh, sometimes uh, working with, for example, superintendents, we work mm -hmm. also for a small, uh, small objects. That's why I asked, for example, example Rita's interest and my interest would both be at the small scale, yeah. right? For example, in the last month, we made a two-dimensional model using uh, not the laser scan, but using uh, photogrammetry of some uh, tissue in the archaeological museum. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you.